I was born and raised in, in Peru. At the age of uh, 12, I had the opportunity to come to the United States. Uh, so I left my entire family behind. And at that point, uh, you know, something strange happened to me. When I came to the States, I realized that it was going to be a long time before I went back home and got to see my family again. Um, so there was that emptiness in me. There was that hole that I needed to fill with something. One day, um, I think it was near my dad's birthday, um, and at, by then I had already realized that I wasn't going to go back home for a while. And, um, you know, after Mass, this family brought a bunch of people over to, um, to the house, and they were, having a, they were celebrating a birthday. So I went to my room and I started crying because, you know, I knew that I wasn't going to celebrate a birthday in a long time with my dad or anybody in my family. So I started crying. and. Um, this lady came in, she grabbed me by the hand and asked me, you know, what was going on. And I, you know, I just kind of didn't want to share because she was a stranger at that point. Um, but she kept insisting, so she grabbed me by the hand and sat me down and, you know, uh, she started asking me questions and uh, started sharing about, you know, missing my family, missing my, my mom and everybody. And she did something that I'd never forget. Um, you know, at one point she looked me in the eyes and she said, um, I'm gonna give you a hug, and this is the hug from your mother. And at the moment that I felt her embrace, um, I actually felt God embracing me. I had just turned 21 and I was ready to transfer to college. Um, I got detained by the Border Patrol, and I get taken down to San Diego, um, you know, to be deported. And uh, of course, my attorney worked things out eventually, but um, it seemed like a very cruel joke to me. And um, I remember uh, I was taken into this cell by my, you know, I was put there by myself. Uh, this was around two o'clock in the afternoon. And um, I was by myself and there was this little window uh, that you could look out to, you know, from. And so I approached the window and I looked at it and somebody carved Jesus saves. And I thought that was very funny, you know, because I wasn't feeling like Jesus was saving me at that moment. Um, but something about those words um, hit me and uh, tears started to come out. And I started, I cried for five hours nonstop. <laughs> and, uh, and I just put it, I put it all out. I, you know, I put it in God's hand. And I was in a cell with another man. You know, he started opening up about his life. Uh, what happened is his family had turned him in. He had a two year old daughter and all he wanted was to be with his daughter. I, that first evening, I asked him if we could pray together, and uh, he said sure. And you know, so I came down from my bunk bed, to hold hands. You know, here we are praying. I say the prayer, and then I climb back up. And a couple of minutes later, he, you know, he calls me. He says, "Hey, uh, chavo," is, is in Spanish. You know, I'm a kid. He says, um, "I can't stop smiling." And I say, "Why?" He says, "Because we just prayed." Next day, you know, we decide to do the same thing. You know, we open up more and we decide to pray together. Um, and just when I, th I thought I was done, you know, I'm closing the prayer, amen, you know, ready to climb my, climb up to my bunk bed again. He holds my hands tight and he starts praying. He said to me, you know, you don't belong here. And I know that God brought you in here just so that you could help me pray again. That's how God uses us. Um, you know, we can have moments of despair when we feel that we are alone. But if, if you just kind of pour your heart out to God, um, He will take it and He will use it.